Howdy, Ags. AP, Corey from the tailgate. We're talking some Aggie football, baby. Mm-hmm. Brought to you by Roster Distributing Assistant Aggies with all their drilling needs, Aggie owned and operated. Go holler at my boy Kevin. Don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yep. Join us on Facebook. There you go. Email us at agstailgate at gmail.com. We like to share those comments in the second episode of the week. If you guys have been watching, we're trying to get some fan involvement in there, so get your name on the show. Corey, 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 Corey. Yeah. All right, so Saturday night, Aggies, Ole Miss, at Kyle Field. Mm-hmm. Aggies take one in the chin, <laughs> 31 to 28. That's one way to put it, yeah. 31 to 28. Hey. Sco- score seems closer than the game was at the end uh, because we got that – we got that touchdown drive there. Yeah, about two minute mark. Mm-hmm. Um, but leaving this game, I guess here's here's just generally. Yeah. I, do you feel better or worse about the Aggies? I feel better about the Aggies. I thought the offense looked good with Connor running it. Um, the defense leaves something to be desired, but the offense looked better. A chain was great. Right. The so offensive line. You feel better. Yeah, the Let me just line. give you this. Aggies are now three and five overall. Yeah. One and four in the conference. Have lost four games in a row and are two and two at home at Kyle Field with the crowd behind them. How about that? This old Miss team, what are they weren't they ranked in the top ten earlier also? Yes, they were. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, they're, they're, currently ranked, they're currently ranked number four. They were, yeah. when we played them, ranked number 15. Mm-hmm. My expectations aren't very high for the Aggies right now. No. I thought they I thought they looked good on offense. So let's start with where you end, where you started. Let's start with that A&M offense. Look, I think nobody would argue here this is the best they've looked all season long. Oh, yeah. And they scored 28 points. They scored 14 right off the bat, didn't they? Yeah. First two drives. Moving the ball down the field. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Move the ball down the field. Yeah. Get get the, the two scores right off the bat. Um, Connor, and look, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Connor here, right? 28 of 44, 338 yards, four touchdowns. Pretty solid. Right. Yeah, he's very solid. He uh, His numbers were actually, I guess he got cold there towards the end, but he was pretty hot for a while. Yeah, he started off on fire. He started off on fire. But look, and he and and here's the thing. <laughs> to me, I'll say this. Obviously, and very clearly, as I've said already, best this offense has looked all year. Mm-hmm. Connor came out, and there's. I don't think there's anybody going to question the fact that this kid should be the starting quarterback for the rest yeah. of the season. Um, you know, they did have a little bit more life as they went through things. Uh, a chain. Has yeah. his best game of the season as well. 25 for 141. Pretty strong, pretty strong Very effort. Strong. Yeah. Right? Moose continues to show out a little bit. Eight for 117 in a touchdown. Stewart with a nice game. Eight for 88. Great so catches. different guys involved. Right. Green with four catches for yeah. 48. Right. Max Wright had a big Max catch. Max Wright had a big catch right off the bat. Right? <clears throat> yeah. So different guys involved. A number of different players get catches. Preston gets a catch in this game. Yeah. It showed up. So and he was rotating the receivers quite a bit. Noah Thomas gets some time. Yeah, he got a touchdown. He got a touchdown pass. Noah Thomas, yeah. And so, yeah. you know, you get you get some different folks in, involved. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought there was a good rotation. Still a tailback, obviously. It's a chain center. Mm-hmm. But look, before the game, we said, what do they have to do? Simplify. Mm-hmm. We talked about script in the first 10 plays. We said minimize checks on early and downs especially. We said get the ball out of his hands, easy reads. Yeah. Play actions, screens, draws. Now we still don't see any draws, of course. No see double moves. Boot action. Boot action with you. So let's 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 sort of break down break that down because I went back and I started watching the game and I was sitting there thinking, you know, the those first two drives, and then what happened? Well, they really did nothing the rest of the day. Right. Did nothing the rest of the day, um, up until that fourth quarter drive late. Yeah. You know, they couldn't they couldn't string things together. However, what I will say is this: Jimbo absolutely simplified the playbook. Connor was on one read. That's it. Yeah. Right. 
Now, and early in the game, those first couple of drives, they were using a little motion. They, they went that play at the pass to Max Wright, play at, nice yeah. play action after a good run by H.A., and hits him in stride yeah. over there. Yeah. They used this, basically the same play to hit Green coming you across the, the middle. of the field a lot better, isn't right? it? I mean, I'm talking tight ends, Stewart and Muhammad coming across. We haven't been doing that all year, like utilizing the middle of the field. We're usually yeah. on the outside or going deep. But, yeah, we utilize, utilize the middle. And if Connor could keep his feet a little bit, there was a couple of times when he just kind yeah. of tripped yeah. tripped over some things. One of those in one of those plays, they tried to do the same tight end in the middle off coming off of that play action, and they actually covered it the third time. But you know, you can't go to the well too many damn right. times, yeah. right? At some point, and I and I thought that I think once gotta, again, I, I thought that Jimbo did a good job of how he started the game. I thought that from the start after, was great. I thought at some point he didn't really start adjusting to. The things that obviously Ole Miss started to do defensively. Well, it's like A-Chain running the ball through the between the tackles. It was successful. Then they start trying to get sneaky. And, and get outside. Exactly. And with that defense, the way they play with that three-man line and everybody sort of eyes in the back, flying from yep. the safety position, they're they're a lot better on the edges than they are in the, in the middle of that defense, right? Yeah. Um, so I did think we got away from going to – I also thought that we had some opportunities to use – the power running game, pulling the guard, maybe with the tight end behind. We had, you know, some some plays there where we got some good gains, and we didn't use that as much in the second half. It was zone, 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 zone. And, look, our offensive line was a little better. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. They were a little better. But they still struggle in the zone blocking scheme doing combo blocks, right? right? They still will sit there and bury their heads and a guy's running right by them over mm -hmm. here, right? Into their into their gap. They'll do different things like that. They, they I thought they were a little bit better as I looked at the film, right? They you know, we've talked about the fact that sometimes they're too fast coming off that defensive lineman. And right. They should help, help, help a little bit and then come off um as the as the linebacker shows up. They were better, but still need some work. So in the right direction. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the offensive line is a lot better. I mean, I'm just thinking back if we could have done this a couple games ago. Uh, Dewberry, guard. I mean, this offensive line, I mean, maybe not so much White Office and maybe Foster, but either way, but just having them set like this, maybe mainly Dewberry instead of Mocha. Yeah. I'll say this, Dewberry is a big old, <laughs> but big old dude. The lines yeah. look better since yeah. he's been in there. Yeah. But if we could have been playing these guys for a while, mm -hmm. Connor, uh, Dewberry, you name him, we're playing five freshmen on offense almost, four or five. I'm going to tell you the other thing on some on a couple of those run plays, the tight ends, the tight ends did some good good blocking yeah. up front. And we saw, and we talked about it last show, right, use more two tight end sets, two back sets. We saw both of those things. I wish we would have used the two back set a little bit more. The only thing that gets me is on that, that two back set, it's always the same play. Yep. It's zone lead, right. zone yep. lead, zone yep. lead, right? Yep. And so no changeup. You know, you can come off of that zone lead with a power on the counter or run the counter back the other way. You know, you can do some different things that are very simple and already basically in your pay in your playbook, right? Right. So you can you can make those little adjustments in those situations. The other thing I I don't love, you know, they they constantly brought Lane across and had him sort of as that blocker there that edge, yeah. just an overlap blocker like why not use another tight end there right or the big crown over right yeah and let you know get a little bit more oomph behind it right and maybe he's gonna set something up with lane in the flats or something like but, but he never does but he never does he never does and so I don't want to make this a negative thing because I thought that he did some things that got better. Mm -hmm. I thought him being Jimbo, right? I thought Jimbo did some things in the play calling and different things to try to help Connor out. Now he's got to take that next step, though. Who, Connor? No, 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 Jimbo, no, right? That's what you're saying. Okay. Because, because at some point, Ole Miss started to adjust to, and we, we were doing the same things over and over again. He mm -hmm. did simplify. Yeah. But now you have to come off something off of it the other thing that gets me is we <laughs> we tell people we're a running team right yeah we tell people we're a running team our play action is still horrible you know the fakes 
you know, even on that tight, the one where he hits Max, right? The one where he hits uh, green, green on the next one, right? Right? But it's like a, it's not, you know, it's not turn and have A chain coming downhill, good fake, and come up and, mm -hmm. it's almost a like little token. He's he, and A chain's yeah. going sideways kind of thing, and it's like that's not man. boring, buddy. And it, it look and it did right. I mean, the two plays, those linebackers did yeah. the safety bit, whatever. But at the same time, if you do it really well, yeah, they'll probably bite every time. Every time, yeah, right? I agree. Um, I'd love to see a much a better play action on that. I guess you know there was some encouraging things. Yeah, a lot of encouraging things. The other th encouraging thing was once again all just one man reads. Now I will tell you this, Connor. Mm -hmm. He was looking for his guy. If his yeah. guy wasn't there, that was it. He was, he he started seeing him. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I thought I saw him look off a couple receivers here and there, progressions. But like you said, for the most part, no. When was that? In the second half, they come out of the huddle, and Jimbo's sitting there. He's talking to Stewart about something, and I said, "Okay, this he's ball's going to Stewart. Stewart." Yeah. No question, right? Yeah. Because he's only looking at one guy. Well, he wasn't looking at Stewart the whole play on that one. He looked, he, he looked off a little bit. And he was back. throwing it to Stewart the whole Stewart play. Away, yeah. But he did. He did look it off. Yep. And then came back and hit. And look, man, there was a couple of those catches after Stewart made the, the touchdown catch. Oh, wow. Great catch. Yeah. Wow. Right? But he did. You know, there was a couple of times he gave him a chance on some one-on-one -on -one balls. And we had a, a, he dropped one. Yeah, and then I think there was another one where we had a pretty good play. I don't know. So you know, but those one-on-one -on -one balls, that's that's also one of those situations like you know who you're going to, right? Right. You're catching the snap, boom, and you're gonna go give him a chance. Right. Those athletes allow you to do that, of course, and be successful at it, and be successful. You know, it's crazy. We saw a lot of guys in the field that we usually don't see. Price, I yeah. saw him on the field. Thomas, like mm -hmm. we said. Um, of course, Max Wright's been on the field quite a bit, but catching that big pass for, I think, 30 yards, 32 31. yards. 31. Yeah. I mean, it's great seeing that. You know, I mean, it's just we have so many young players who are starting to get involved in the game, different players. Yeah. That have, I mean, they might have had playing time, but not really any action. Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, it's like they're not getting the ball. I'll say this. Offensively, obviously, look, it was a step forward. Are we where we need to be? No. We need to continue to do things to try to – Keep things easy on Max. I would have liked to see maybe a couple more wide receiver screens, little bubble screens or, right. or, or now screens type things, you know, just to give him some easy throws and completions and let those athletes try to be athletes out there. The game looked like in the first couple series when we were moving the ball, like a good rhythm, you know? Yeah. And I don't know how we got away from that. Like you said, maybe they were just calling the same plays over and over and the defense was getting used to it. You know, the other thing was, in I don't remember if it was the first or second one of those drives, we went and did a little tempo. Right. But then we get out and, of it. And you come out of it, and then you get out. And I don't think we use tempo again the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, Until that right at the end. end. When you have to. Right? That's not really tempo when you go two minutes. That's just a two-minute right. That's just a two-minute drill. Yeah. So, like, that was encouraging to me early. I mm -hmm. said, because what did we talk about last time? Get some little tempo. Just yeah. Make, and make this, like, rhythm. quick quick plays where yeah. Connor doesn't have time in between to think. Exactly. He's just going to take the snap. He runs the play, and he's yeah. going to go, right? And... And I think he plays loose. You can have him play a little bit looser that way, but you know, then we got away from it, and you know, then it's the same. Okay, take your time. Take your time. It's, oh, oh, exactly. you know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, but once again, I not not to be negative because I do think it's the best we've looked offensively. It is. Um, but we got to now take that next step, right? Yeah. Offensive line wise, I'll say this: I think they look better. Um, I've been man. I started watching Father a little bit more. This See, week. I was just wondering if the offensive line looked better. It's Ole Miss's front three that they ran. They ran a three right. man, made them look better. You see what I'm saying? True, because there was times in which, like we talked about before the game, if you give them a third down and long, where it looks like it's going to be a pass, they 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 did. They brought right. all those little schemes and things and they probably still are only bringing four but they're doing it all from one side type of thing right right and and that that hurt us that hurt us robinson missed one where the guy came free mm -hmm. um and i think that was that one pass where connor as he's getting blown up just kind of floats it up there and moose catches it on the corner route right yeah Un unreal that that was completed or not intercepted <laughs> but 
But, you know, the guy comes free, right? Right. It, to me, the, the weirdest part about this offensive line is that it seems that it's been the right side worse than the left side at times with yeah. Robinson and Fathery. And Fathery, I was going to say, hasn't played as good as he did at times last year this year. I mean, he... That's the side of the line we weren't supposed to be worried about. Right. We knew the left side coming in this season right. was going to be, like, iffy. But the right side was... Yeah, you got all American candidate guard and father you tackle. You're and supposedly Foster, who's supposed to be one of the better centers last year, a freshman, going into a sophomore year, but it hadn't worked out that way. Yeah, uh, Adazio, Adazio's got to do something to get things rolling in the right direction there, right? Yeah. And Jimbo's got to help him with with the scheme and the play call and those types of things. All right, grade this offense for this week. Grade, oh God, from what I've seen to this, I mean, I almost give him an A. I mean, I, <laughs> seriously, from what I've seen all year to this, no they'd, turnovers. They'd be, right? Yeah, there'd be like a big curve. You know what I'm saying? It's like a huge curve compared to where we were yeah. at before. It might be an A plus plus. Yeah, but in reality, it's probably a B, maybe a B minus. Yeah, C plus doesn't say C B plus, minus, B yeah. minus. I mean, the offensive line still needs work. Uh, besides those first two drives, like you said, it's kind of stalled out. Went back to the old. Aggie Way, I guess, of recent. Just three Offensive outs. player of the game for you. Well, A-Chain was great. I think uh, you got to go with Connor, don't you? I think so. I mean, what do you have? How many yards passing? 344 and four touchdowns. When was the last Aggie that did that? <laughs> not this year. No, not, not in the last two years. Well, I don't know how, I don't know what Cal's out of for last year against Alabama. I knew it was a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, point being is he, he was a spark, right? Yeah. The one good thing, and, and you've been complaining about this all along, but you hate Haynes' sort of wind-up. It's a wind-up, yeah. And See, Connor's got a here, nice We saw nice that good. one, oh, yeah. you know, where he, Haynes can't do that because Haynes will be – then he has to come back again. And You see what I'm saying? The yeah. fake is Haynes, – Haynes, Haynes definitely knows the offense better, but at the end of the day, Connor was playing a little bit looser. He, he seemed to – he seemed to just he, – he, he was just kind of playing on instinct a little bit. Haynes knows the offense better. What has that done for us? Nothing. That's what I'm saying. I mean – Let's simplify it. Make let the offensive line simplify it for them. It just goes run smoother. They're all out there thinking too much, like you said. Yep. So, you know, let this continue. Don't 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 take this and say, okay, well, let's let's start doing all these other different yeah. things, right? I mean, like, stay with it, right? Now let's get another weekend under the, you know those same types of situations. Let's go. Let's go from there. All right. What you got? If this offense would have been paired with the, our defense last year, yeah, <laughs> or earlier this season, or against we'd, the, we'd, have, yeah. we'd have won this game, or with a healthy unit, yeah. But let's talk about this A and M defense because we allowed three hundred and ninety rushing yards, one hundred and forty passing because yeah. they didn't need to. I know. Judkins, good tailback by the way. Well, he looked great like yesterday. He could have won the Heisman. Thirty-four for two twelve. Jeez. Dart, another 17 for 108. Evans, 8 for 75. Look, we come out in this game, and just so you know, what did we say the Aggies must do? Four-man line, yeah. linebacker focus on the running back plays, avoid the distractions of the motions and misdirections, and pressure Dart. So we didn't really pressure Dart, yep. right? Yep. We come out in the three-man line, and... Off of that three-man line, they go seven plays, 75 yards, a touchdown. It's not even hard. Yeah. It was awful. It was ugly. Neat. So, so Corey, let me ask you, man. You're DJ Durkin. You're DJ Durkin. You know, you know that Lane wants to run the football because that's what they've been doing all, all year. year long. Exactly. What in the world possesses you to come out in that three-man line, two linebackers, six defensive backs? Three, by the way. Freshman safeties. That's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Why, why would you sit there and put your defense in that situation? I mean, yeah, you have good three good defensive linemen down there. It's still two on one. And they're getting to the second level. They're getting five yards downfield before we make a play on them. I mean, I, how many times do you go untouched? I'm talking yeah, the it's second crazy. level. And our linebacker's out of place every Every play. I mean, he's misreading them. I mean, they're fooling. The eye candy linebackers are fooled. They're just, oh, yeah. They're, Lime, they're they're because they're so slow to play off of anything like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. And, and and we'll keep talking about this defense. But, you know, a couple of things that, to show you from the coaching side of things, right? Yeah. 
Like, this is the touchdown play on that first drive, Corey. And they've got three wide receivers out here on the left-hand side, and the tailback's lined up to the left. We've got three DBs on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. They've got one tight end on the right. We got three DBs on the right. He's not Are we ball. worried about number one well, that he's much? Definitely not going to get the ball. And then you wonder, okay, well, why did we get end up with a guy wide open? Well, yes. Don't get me wrong. Yes, Damani shouldn't have taken the back. He should have. He should have gone with the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time. This is just misalignment from the get-go. Right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's an easy read for this quarterback. Is that the, first, is that the, the first drive of the game? This is the first drive of the game. Yeah, I see it's a three-man front. Three-man front. Easy read for the quarterback. <coughs> right. Right? If Damani takes takes the wheel, we're going to hit the top, the tailback on the, on the swing way. pass, yeah. and he's going to have days to run. If he doesn't take the wheel, mm -hmm. you got a wide-open guy in the end zone. Yeah. Right? Easy. Over here, this is after we get to the four-man line. They're, they've been running the ball right down the middle. We're playing with one linebacker. All right? We'll talk about that here in a second. We're yeah. playing not, the whole day, four down linemen, one linebacker once we've got the four-man line. Well, they're gashing us up the middle. What do we do? We've got three guys outside for the quarterback run, and there's not one person other than this linebacker is about to get slobber knocked by 57, right. by the way in the whole entire middle of the field. Mm -hmm. This run goes for a lot, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure. So, you know, those are the things that I'm seeing with Dirk and like, what are you, what are you doing in that situation? If you've got that, you've got to get that defensive line slanting hard inside because you've got a safety already coming out on the outside, right? Right. So, that is, that is scheme and teaching and being disciplined defensively. That's a bad scheme, man. Yeah. That is bad scheme. We've been saying that all year. Yes. Yes. I mean, Look, once they went to the, the four-man no, line. I mean, it's the very next uh, series. When they get the ball back, we go to the four-man line. I mean, but does it help? I mean, we <laughs> we got killed. They didn't run for 390 on the first series. You know right. what I'm saying? Here's the thing, though. <laughs> let me t Well, let me tell you. They had drives in the second half of 94 yards, 85 yards, and 75 yards off for touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Okay? We said the first drive was 75 yards also. Yeah. Right? These are big, long drives. And they were just going boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom. Here's my thing, right? Okay, he adjusted. <laughs> he didn't take long to adjust. He got out of that three-man line. ASAP after that first series. I'm surprised it took him that long. It should never have been the case. Right. But then he adjusts to a four-man line with one linebacker. Let me tell you something. Cooper and White are both healthy. Russell is healthy. Russell played more snaps than any of the other guys, I think. Maybe him and White were about even. Why didn't they have two linebackers in there? Why can't we play the two linebackers? I guess a team that's going to run the football. Yeah. Right? And it's not like you've got Antonio Johnson in the secondary. He's out. Yeah, exactly. So one of your best secondary players who may be able to make up the difference for a line, you know, play a little more line. Why is Richardson playing as a safety as much in, in that situation, not more in the, in the box? Just, just poor. Right? Yeah, it's terrible. All those things are questions that I have. And now you've got three freshman safeties. And look, Bryce Anderson's a man. He's in every play. Oh, yeah. He's, he's active. Very active. Like, he sees it. He's like probably, he and Chappelle, they're, they're very active. Unbelievable, right? Mm -hmm. That dude is good. And Kerr is going to be a good a good safety. Mm -hmm. And Matthews, is gonna, he made a great play on that uh, yep. pass, yeah, knocked did. it down. You know, he got to beat a little beat. bit. Yeah, yeah. Got, but he came and down Mingo, and yeah. Mingo, um, and made a great play. So those guys are talented and good players, but they're still freshmen, right? There's just a lot of questions. And you've got so, three of them on still, the field. Yeah, freshmen. Not to mention half our defensive line is playing as freshmen. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we've talked about that all year, just – you know, the four man front, what we had old miss. What was our key to stop due to old miss? Stop the run. We come so, out with a three man front. We said this before the game. We're like, you can't do a three man front against old miss of all teams. Right. And make them pass the ball, make them beat you with the pass. So you're coming out against that team with five guys in the box and they got a six six blockers. They got five offensive linemen yeah. and a tight end. Yeah, I'm just Look. And we got six defensive backs back there that are 
they don't want to hit people. I mean, they'll hit them. Don't get me wrong. They, they'll hit them. But they're not going to be like a Cooper or a White up in there making a play. And so, that's the whole reason you have Jackson and Nolan up there taking up those. Correct. And that's what we talked about. This. You take up. Nolan takes up two it's blockers. It's still too many Jackson. gaps for one linebacker, right? That's what I'm Even saying. Even with four yeah. defensive yeah. linemen, it's too many two gaps for, for one linebacker. Yeah. And your secondary guys aren't good enough to to take care of those overlaps, especially not at the line of scrimmage, right? Right. Not at the line of scrimmage. And they were gashing. Look, it's a good thing that that defensive line is as good as it is because they made a ton of plays to stop the run. If if you get – but anytime they got past the defensive line, yeah, it was going for 6 to 15 to 20, right? Well, they kept saying on the broadcast, all oh, our defensive line is dominating the game. Yeah. Do you, do you remember what they were saying? And Jackson played a good game. Nolan Look, played a good you game. you know who your, lead, your leading tackler in this game was? No. McKinley Jackson. Oh, was From he, the bro? defensive tackle, How many had, had 12 tackles. Get out of here. Leading tackler, McKinley Jackson. No, nah, I don't remember him. I mean, I'm trying to think of 12 plays he was in on. Your second leading tackler? Bryce Anderson at the safety. Yeah, he is. Your third good. leading tackler, Chappelle. You don't have a linebacker in your top three, right? But it's like I mean, we said, it's like I pointed out to you during the game. It's like, is that Cooper? We thought he was hurt. He's not hurt. Because he's not playing. Why? You he's know, supposed that, to be one of our pre- premier performers coming into this year. Yeah, and one of the greatest athletes on the field is at the linebacker position, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, and so it seems like they're, they've, they've sort of put him in the doghouse over something. That were the linebackers playing great before? No, yeah. but at the same time, it seems to me like this is a this is a situation where the coaches have sort of put them in a bad situation, right? Yeah. And and now they're 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 putting him on the sideline. Well, maybe he has an injury worse than we know. I have no idea, but I mean, it's just weird that we he was only in there for a player two. Yeah, that I remember. And he made a tackle in that player two. Yeah, but I mean, maybe there's something else that we're not knowing. I mean, if he must be really in the doghouse not to be on the field. Yeah, to me, there's it's it's hard to imagine why in the world why in the world that happens. I mean, right? Because look, Russell Russell has has shown that he's energetic. Right. right? He wants to play, but he he's still slow to react. Right. And the motions and things will yeah, distract the mess out of him. Right. Yeah, he's gone. Um, he's like the cameraman was the other, yesterday. I mean, just Russell. Oh yeah, that's what and, his head is doing. What the cameraman is doing. You know, there's two guard, a guard and a tackle pulling right in front of him, and he's sitting there waiting. Yeah. <laughs> like, where do you think it's going? It's just, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to trust your reads. You got to see it, and you got to go. That's how you play linebacker. Yeah. See it and go. Well, that's a lot of instinctive stuff you're talking yeah. about. It's hard to teach, and Russell doesn't have it. You know, Doug Cooper might have it, but he's not showing it. The other guy that's sort of disappointed me quite a bit this year so far is Richardson. Yeah, well, I think we said that earlier yeah. on the podcast because he just hasn't been, besides that run or whatever that was against uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. He just, he's, look, we talk about the fact he probably should be in the box all the time and on this team with, you know, the other group of safeties. We got guys that can be behind there and Gilbert, and Bryce, Antonio when he's on the field different <coughs> but he's a guy that should be basically a linebacker on this team yeah and making plays and making plays and, but Bryce Anderson's more like that and so is Chappelle than yeah. Damani is it's crazy that Chappelle is more that guy than Damani is yeah it's just crazy another guy that had a great I thought had a really good day is Chappelle yeah right and he sticks his head in there no matter what right he will take on an offensive tackle if they ask him to yeah I got you um I don't have any explanation for the poor performance of this defense other than the fact that they're just being put in horrible, horrible situations. I mean, yeah. that defensive line I really thought showed out. Did we I have a lot of penalties McKinley. on defense? The pass interference calls were. But, yeah. you know, if you're bringing pressure and you yeah. get a one-on-one matchup with pass interference, you sort of take that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not we're even bringing pressure, pressure yeah, right? What's right. happening yeah. is those safeties and – it's those in the box safeties, Richardson, Kern, those guys are basically playing an underneath almost mm-hmm. zone. They're just kind of sitting there, yeah. and then you still have your man, your man up on. The, so you're not you're getting none of the best of both worlds, right? It's the worst yeah. of both worlds. You're not bringing pressure on the quarterback because you're only rushing four, and, and you're not getting coverage because you're not keeping the safety deep. Uh, the, the that's guys over the top. The part that killed us is Jackson Dark's legs. Whenever you know if he would get back there, he'd have a little bit of time. But well, they were running lanes for all day, and 
And Richardson's part of that, right? Because he was sort of, there was times when he was kind of the spy, the overlap guy there, and there he goes running, and Richardson's nowhere to be found, right? The linebacker's yeah. nowhere to be found. That was disappointing. I mean, that's what happened. You just couldn't be off the field again. Same thing, App State, that game, couldn't be off the field. The quarterback run was huge. Yeah, it was huge. huge. I mean, 108 yards by the quarterback. I mean, it sucks to give up 200 to that one kid, but the quarterback for another 100? Yes, especially when we're not talking like they're running, they're running quarterback yeah, option plays yeah. for him. Yeah, they're not doing that. He's just scrambling. We yeah, we did a horrible job of containing him in the pocket, mm-hmm. and and when because we're up the field so much sometimes with that defensive line, we're not bringing pressure from the linebackers. We're sort of sitting in the middle, but then they're not reacting to when he's breaking out of there. Right. Um, so you know, we talked about they have to get pressure. Well, they didn't do it right. They didn't bring pressure. Mm. They didn't bring pressure. I think we had one sack. McKinley Jackson, by the way. Right. Um, I just don't understand what Durkin and Santucci are trying to accomplish. Uh, I think they've already accomplished it. I don't think they're going to be around next year. I'll say this. Got to see some of Darius Jones yesterday. Probably all you're going to see him, too. And look good. What, are you talking about 55? Yeah. I thought he blew out his knee. I thought he came back in the game. Oh, I thought he blew out his knee. Mm-hmm. But maybe, I could be wrong. A lot of guys went down for injury. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. They got back guys, up and back in the game. A lot of guys went down for injury, and that was a strategy by Durkin. <laughs> yeah. If they get a big play, somebody gets hurt. Yeah, That's Walter amazing. Nolan was on the ground three or four. Like, he oh, came out of the game like no four times. The shoulder. We're just yeah. like, what? Oh. oh, yeah. And they'll point at the knee, so it looks real. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, it's the knee. the knee. Yeah. Oh, and they get right. it back into play. Then the play next play, yeah. And look. If it helps you, go for it. Well, do whatever you got to do to stop them. But they weren't stopping them anyway. No. I don't know. I mean, that's the biggest thing, just getting off the field. I mean, we got them. I don't know how many third downs they made, but it seemed like every one of them they got. Yeah. I, no turnovers. We didn't get the ball. You know, I just. Uh, there was a third and one, and we're in there. This is, I think this was in the first drive. We're in there in the three man line. Our two defensive ends are outside of their tackles. Yeah. Third and one. Yeah, two defensive ends are outside of the tackles. Well, they weren't running outside you know, much. <laughs> um, dude, I, I just, I just, it, to me, it's inexplicable. Inexplicable. Okay. All that said, look, a couple of guys did play pretty well. I'd named Bryce Anderson, McKinley Jackson, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, those two guys I thought were exceptional. I thought Chappelle played pretty damn well. Uh, Jalen Jones had some good parts in the game, right? He he had some you know, a couple of in coverage and, and did some good things. Right. What about Diggs? Diggs had some moments there where he almost got to, almost got to yeah. right. Yeah. And then the guy would escape. And did we get any sacks at all yesterday? I don't remember. I mean, I'm trying one to think. by McKinley Jackson. That's the only one. Yeah. So there were some positives. Who's your, play, who's your defense player of the game? McKinley Jackson. Yeah. I mean, I thought he played great. You said he led the team in tackles. That from a 300 plus pound guy. Anchoring defensive your, tackle, right? Yeah, it's defensive amazing. tackle. I mean, he's not even in there the whole game. He, he rotates out. Yeah, you know, he takes plays off because they have so many good defensive linemen. I thought a number of defensive linemen played well too. I, you know, uh, Stewart. I thought Stewart Turner had a, had a good game. A lot of people we haven't uh, seen. Like Nolan, Jones. Darius Jones. I thought had a mm-hmm. good game. You know, Regis was 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 good at times in Turner. there. Turner. Um, uh, Did you say Overton? Overton had a couple, uh, you know, a couple. Of that was a big game. call on Regis, also. Remember that call where he got called for hit to the face or whatever it was? Would they call that on Regis? Was that no? Remember they ended up calling that a holding on. Yeah, that's what offense. it was. Uh, I remember coming through. It was like oh, Regis. What did you do this time? But yeah. They play a lot. I mean, how many guys they rotate? Like twelve. That's a lot. lot. Yeah, they do. Can you get in a rhythm that way or not? And and at times, hell, remember in that in in one of those drives, they sit in there and. Ole Miss makes a substitution until the ref comes in and holds them. They they rotated the whole defensive yeah. line. You know, they're I don't know much about the offensive keep, line. They're going to whole fresh. game. You don't yeah. rotate many offensive linemen in a game, but they rotate all these defensive linemen. Twelve. I mean, keep them fresh, man. Does that because, work? Yeah, because those guys, those guys, have, you know, do they need to get in a rhythm too? Though they do, they do. They have to get enough plays, I think, you know, because. They do use different moves and different things, but ultimately, at the end of the day, those guys work a lot harder than the offensive linemen in the sense that it's so much a motor, yeah. go, go, go kind of thing. Right? So you have 12 defensive linemen that you're rotating throughout the game. I want, if I'm the coach, I want to try to play my best four a majority of the game, but I don't know if we're doing that. You see what I'm saying? I want McKinley Jackson out there. He played a, 75, say, I don't snaps, know if, right? it was, if it was that many of the snaps, but he played more than anybody else. I mean, what, do you sure. want them in there? Your best players? I know what you're saying about them getting tired, but. 
you know, we always said we wanted them in there in the most certain drives, the most critical moments, stuff like that, right? So yeah. sometimes we give them a breather in, in between the, the 30s, and then when we get close, we want those guys in there. Right. These guys are, are doing a lot by, by drive, especially against a team like Ole Miss who's not going to let you substitute sometimes, mm-hmm. right? So, um, look, they, they, but they played well, man. I thought they played well, but they were asked to do too much in this game. If they didn't make the play, nobody else was making the play. Gotcha. Um, all right, so defensive player of the game, McKinley. Yeah, McKinley Jackson, definitely. I think it's I think it's easy. I think there's no question McKinley, about yeah. that. I think it's McKinley. I mean, over. Bryce Anderson, I thought played a great game. Yeah. Um, besides that, you said it's like some of the guys played solid, but no. I. Uh, I'll tell you, the most disappointing defensive player is DJ Durkin. <laughs> DJ Durkin, who who you know, obviously Jimbo's handpicked guy on the defense coordinator side there yeah. to to run that defense. When he was not good last year at Ole Miss, he was definitely he was worse the year before at Ole Miss. So right now, would you have Durkin back next year? No, no, not even close. Do you think he will be back? Yes, I do. See, I don't think he will. Well, we'll find out. I mean, they got to make changes, right? I mean, everybody's been saying that. It says it. Somebody said it on TV. All right, so here we go. <coughs> go ahead, put. Questions from the tailgate brought oh, okay, to you by Carney's Pub and Grill. Good times, good drinks, good people. Right. Number one, does this game make you feel better or worse about the rest of the season and next? Uh, this season, yeah. I mean, I'm not expecting much. <clears throat> but the problem is not expecting much, and then we get better, and maybe we'll beat Auburn, Florida. I don't think we'll beat LSU. UMass. And in the season, what was that, three out of four games or four to yeah, five? Yeah, that'd, that'd get you to six and six. Bowl game, huh? Bowl game. Here's here's it makes me feel better for this season and for next. Just having Connor and those guys get reps and get ready. But our expectation will be out the roof next year, coming in uh, just like it was this year. To a certain extent, it makes me feel worse. Let me t- explain. Let me explain this. Yeah, go ahead. Because I do think that look, Connor's the right guy for the job, right? I think I've been saying that all year. But go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um. The thing that, that scares me is that they're going to have just enough success, just like yesterday when, when they, you know, they talked to Jimbo, and he's like, oh, look how, look how good we look. And, you know, look, you had two good drives. Play. Yeah. You play. had two good drives at the beginning of the game. Thank right. you, Jimbo. Yeah. All right? Um, my fear is that that means that Jimbo's going to say, we don't need to change. Oh, that's poor yeah. that's we don't need to change. No, it's obvious we need to change. It's obvious. Is it obvious to Jimbo? Well, let's see what happens in the next few games. Because that, to me, is the fear, right? Yeah. Is that they make enough plays because those receivers are that good, because that tailback is that good, because that quarterback yeah. is that talented. They make enough plays to make Jimbo say, hey, this is going to work. Yeah. And it's not his scheme. It's the players. But if you put those players in an actually good scheme, maybe every once in a while you see an open receiver like a Tennessee. Remember like I said, weekend? there's just not that much rhythm. Yeah, Tennessee had... Wide open passes all game. I mean, a guy that caught five touchdown passes. Yeah, he caught five touchdown passes the other day. He's still wide open yesterday. Yeah, crazy. You know, so I guess my point is that's what scares me. The other thing that scares me is that Jimbo is generally very loyal to his guys. I don't think he's going to fire DJ Durkin. No. I think DJ Durkin's done about as poor a freaking job as you possibly can with his defense at this point. And I think he's going to be back next year. I think, uh, no. I, I disagree with you on that. I think Durkin's done. I think he's done. Because that's a contract we can eat if we have to. I don't even know what it's owed on it. But at the same time, we got to do something better on defense. If you, you see a three-man front as fans, as people sitting there in your message board, you know these guys are hearing it, Jimbo, Durkin, and you continue to do it. Why? There's no explanation for Why? Because he thinks he's real smart and he's going to do all this stuff and everything, but he can't get to a point where he can actually use the variability of that three-man front to ever do anything with it because teams that see it, they just run off. Well, the three-man front anyway, you have to have the right players at linebacker to have a three-man front. We don't have that. We and don't have the right personnel right now. And when your best players are a defensive line, why would you do it? That's what I'm saying. But my point is this. he I don't think he fires Durkin because I think he's a loyal guy. He's going to sit in there and stick no, with him. He won't be. He'll be the AD. The AD will fire him. He'll be like, hey, man. He's gone. End of the day, the thing that scares me the most is that the little bit of success, and mind you, it's scary, number one, that on a day in which we lose to Ole Miss at home, yeah. 
Ole Miss at home after out recruiting them all the last four years, by the way. Yeah. Recruiting better than them the last four not this past year, Corey. Hunter. The last four years, we lose to them at home and everybody's excited. I'm not excited about that loss, Corey. Well, because your expectations are still way too high. It's not expectations. It, I, I knew, look, I thought they were going to lose the game. Yeah. But the did. point is that it's, it's, it's a miscarriage of justice for these players, man. Because in all honesty, these coaches are just getting absolutely outperformed day in and day out, no matter yeah. who's on the other sideline. The guy at App State outcoached us, my friend. Oh, and yeah. I guarantee you he ain't a top 50 coach. Well, how do you say top 50 coach? Why do you say that? I'm just throwing that's it just out there. Rude. I'm about to say that's just rude. Yeah, yeah, just throwing it out there. Sorry, App State. So, sorry, App State. Yeah. They lost to Texas State, by the way. Oh, God, it's awful. Um, South Carolina lost to Mizzou, by the way. I don't know. I, we lost to South Carolina, right? Yeah, Missouri's okay. really good. Really good. It's got to be. All right, question number two. Go ahead. What effect on the player morale, the portal talk, all that stuff, game like this? I think uh, the good news is the freshman, he's playing a lot of freshmen. I'm talking yeah. a lot of true lot. freshmen. True freshmen. Not red shirts. They're true. I mean, there's sometimes on any possession on offense or defense, there's, what, five, six true freshmen almost? And you got Connor, uh, Green, Stewart, uh, Dewberry. You know I mean? That's just four right there. And Thomas. Thomas, five, Moss. Moss, six. I mean, you got these. These are true, true freshmen. Yeah. Playing against Ole Miss, who is a ranked team, I think we're still better than them. I mean, if we play the game again tomorrow, I think ain't nobody beat them. By the At way, halftime, you he replaced say, he replaced his entire freaking offense this offseason too. And, but so. he they showed the transfer portal <laughs> at halftime where he goes and how he gets these players. Yeah, but you know, you keep talk, talking to me about oh, yeah, okay, uh, you know, experience. These guys are all new to his system too. Exactly. But he Lane simplifies. Just, he even simplifies. said that he goes, "We only have so many plays. We just have variations yeah. of them. It means so, the same sets." You know? So, play them around. I mean, they're playing all the freshmen, so you think that they're going to stick around for that for sure, right? Well, yeah, you think so. I mean, as long as we can, if we can string together some wins, and if somehow we beat. I mean, maybe we get better, and we're looking better come LSU weekend. Maybe yeah. you and I are singing the song we're singing. I would love to be singing that song, my friend. Yeah, me too. Look, I did. I thought it was great. I thought it was great to see, one, a bunch of players come out after the incident this past week. Right. And they were fired up about being together, right? Mm-hmm. And they talked with Green, you know, uh, Brunlo Dindy, uh, Cam Dewberry, you yeah. know, Stewart. You know, all these guys came out in, in support of this program and the things that we're doing. And I thought that that was huge. I thought that right. was a big, big thing. And I agree with you. Those guys getting those opportunities, I think, once again, is going to make them think, heck yeah. But now you have to continue to get those those opportunities, especially offensively. Because I think that's the side of the ball that I'm – I think the defensive guys are sticking around. For yeah. The majority they knew what they were getting playing. into. They're, they're playing. They're yeah, doing, they knew what they were getting into. They're giving they're, – and they're giving opportunities, right? Man right. coverage and stuff. You know, I don't think they're going – on the offensive side, I think it's where it's going to be critical that now you continue to do That's things what I was to ask help you. those guys get out there and make plays, right? So, Connor playing the way he did yesterday, yeah. he's our starter going on the rest of the year, mm-hmm. right? No matter what happens with Haynes or yeah, Max. No doubt. What, uh, so has Haynes King played his last game here? Yeah, Haynes is on his way to the transfer portal. Max? Max, is either that or he wants to graduate with his brother. Okay. Well, is his brother going to stay here too? Is he, did he get on the field? No, no it was Smith, right? Yeah, Blake Smith. The, who got the last pass thrown. For some he reason, been in the game, he, gets, game, he, he hasn't been thrown. in the game all season. And all of a sudden, in the last drive, he gets two balls thrown at him. I mean, what's where's Green? He was incredible. Where's Max? It was incredible. That's, yeah, incredible. Lee Bad. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Bad. <laughs> Corey? Yeah. We're gonna do another one of these this week. Let's do it. Wait. Oh wait, I'm going to Costa Rica. Yeah, I was about to say. Hold up. I'm going to Costa Rica. Uh, I'd still try to do one on Thursday. Sounds good. Give me a shot. Probably not on Thursday. I'm gonna be on a fishing boat. Oh, that'll be tough. Yeah, that'll be tough. Maybe Wednesday night. Just give me a holler. Yeah, but you at night you sleep. My bad. That's all right. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So if you don't see us for a couple of days, 
Maybe you know, a week. It's because I'm in Costa Rica. Either way, I'm going to try to put something on yep. at some point this week. Giga Maggie's. Giga Aggies. Here we go. Yep.